All right, so our guest today is a real estate mogul. He's an entrepreneur and he's the husband, he's a father, he's a man of God. We have Alex McDonald. Thanks, What's Matt. up, buddy? Hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Oh, thanks for uh, thanks for jumping on and jumping on this uh, this episode, man. I really appreciate your time. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, no, always great to yeah share my experiences and uh, just be a part of the community here. Totally. So, so uh, where where does Adam Alexander come from? So good question, and um, I was born. Uh, well, so let me let me back up a little bit. And so uh, you know, the Adam Alexander is kind of the name of our real estate company. Uh, it started kind of on a prophetic word that I was uh, given many years ago. And uh, um, in my previous job, and I'll try to make the story short, but you know how God's stories are, sometimes they, they get to be uh, pretty long. But, uh, um, you know, I was working a previous job, traveling a lot around uh, around the country, I'm not at home much, just, you know, really kind of, kind of uh, climbing the corporate ladder, so to speak. And uh, went into a, a prayer meeting with a, uh, um, a pastor fr from Africa. And, uh, you know, immediately uh, when he kind of came in the room, he locked eyes with me and he just said, uh, he's like, wow, you work way too much. So I was like, hmm, all right. Well, um, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm anxious to hear more. So uh, he got to pray over me and, uh, um, you know, just kind of prayed off, uh, you know, a lot of the aspects we all struggle with in life, you know, as as husbands, as fathers, as, you know, men that like to work. Um, just kind of um, our identity it doesn't come from work. It kind of comes from the Lord. So um, he just prayed, you know, super sweet prayer. Heart of David, um, you know, that uh, God sees the hard work, but, you know, uh, God's transitioning me into a new season and a new job. And he said, now, uh, your name's Adam, right? And I said, well, yeah, but I've gone by Alex my whole life. And uh, so no one knows that my real given name is Adam Alexander McDonald. So um, as we kind of transitioned into um, our real estate business uh, the, many, many years ago, um, that's where we kind of came up with the name Adam Alexander Real Estate, came out of that prophetic word, which is really, really neat. Really cool. So, so before, before we jump into that, how long, how long have you been in the real estate industry? Yeah, so I started a swing and a hammer on a framing crew in high school. Uh, kind of uh, cut my teeth in the in the construction and real estate industry there, and uh, slowly, um, as I graduated high school, I picked up jobs through college. Got me through college doing uh, remodels, property management, uh, flips. Kind of started learning all the aspects uh, of real estate. Um, uh, my wife and I uh, started investing uh, in real estate. We actually bought our first home. Uh, here in downtown Eagle, and it was a, uh, um, a foreclosure property. And uh, the real estate agent, uh, when they uh, when he tried to show it to us, wouldn't even go in the house because uh, there were feral cats living in the house. And so, um, you know, it was it was quite a disaster. But uh, that's where we kind of uh, Becky and I kind of uh, started into our real estate realm, and um, you know, been doing it you know ever since uh, we were married. So you know, we've been practicing doing real estate here in the Valley for over 25 years, transitioned into investment properties, helping people do uh, remodels and, and uh, development properties, entitlement, uh, and just helping people buy and sell. Um, and so it's been, uh, been quite a journey to see kind of the ebbs and flows of the real estate market here in Idaho and specifically a sub-market of Boise and, and Eagle and Meridian. And uh, it's been a great pleasure to, to serve clients all the way from Mountain Home to the Oregon border. And so, so what type of, I would, I would say when you're climbing the corporate ladder and I know you got kids and we won't really get into too much of the, the kids stories, but, but when you get into, you know, this corporate world versus the real estate world, how much more free time do you have, uh, to spend with your family, with your wife, um, with with your with your kids or doing ministry what what does that look like are you exchanging time for money or or what are your thoughts yeah i think when you you know transition in, and this is what i love about being in idaho there's so many you know there's an entrepreneurial spirit i feel about you know within idaho and, and boise and, and the areas and uh you know we're able to kind of come out from that start your own business 
um, it's hard, right? You're when you start a business, you're the one, um, you know, picking up the phone every single time it rings, just because that might be, you know, the next contract or the next, uh, you know, uh, client. So, um, in that aspect, it's a little bit, um, you know, more challenging because it's 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 creating healthy boundaries, I think, and that's really what I've learned, you know, over the last um, 10, 15 years, is you know, be able to really create those boundaries, um, to be able to spend more time with my kids, to be able to be present. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, so from, you know, coming from kind of the corporate world into, you know, um, the real estate space, um, it has provided a lot more flexibility, uh, but it's also been more challenging just because, um, you know, you can't like, uh, you know, you have set hours, you don't have vacation time, you don't have retirement, you know, you don't have health insurance, you know, all kind of those, uh, those benefits that come with uh, being in a, in a corporate world. So, um, it's been it's been really a good opportunity for me from not only a faith standpoint, just to be able to trust the Lord that, you know, hey, as I, you know, kind of set time and set boundaries on, on my business and with clients, um, but also, uh, you know, being able to trust the Lord that he's going to be able to, you know, get back that time with, uh, you know, um, you know, finding the right properties for clients a little bit quicker or uh, the right deals come along. And so... Um, I think that's been, you know, something that is always going to be a challenge in, in my life. And I think in every man's life, right, to, you know, be a, be a, a provider, and, but yet, you know, be there to see our kids grow because time is short with our kids, you know, and, you know, I've got a, uh, a 20 year old, a 17 year old and a 13 year old and um, it goes quick, you know, and so all the all the young dads uh, out there, those young kids is, you know, my advice is, you know, right now before we you know, get into too much, just, you uh, you know, be, be uh, dedicated with that time, you know, set time apart, set a Saturday morning or a Friday night or, um, you know, even a Tuesday night to be really uh, strategic in, in how you spend your time because it, it does go fast. So, um, you know, and I think, you know, part of, uh, you know, what I, I like to do is, you know, I'm, I'm a very structured person um, and, you uh, you know, I like to be able to, you know, set time and, and boundaries and, and uh, you know, I think what people don't realize is when you set healthy boundaries, um, specifically, you know, more upon your time, um, your clients really respect that, you know, because most of your clients or your customers or people you interact with, their parents or, or you know, they're dealing in life. And so they, they, I really seen a change of that kind of, they honor that with, within you. Um, and, uh, um, at first, you know, you kind of get a little bit nervous of like, wow, I just, I want to perform. Right. And so this, that whole performance, you know, aspect that, uh, you know, I've been really working through that it's kind of a mind shift, uh, from that and to be able to, um, you know, communicate with clients proactively, like, Hey, you know, I know we, you're, uh, um, you know, coming into town this weekend, but my son has a baseball game. Here's the set times. I hope that works for you, but I'm, you know, be able to work around that. Uh, to be able to serve my clients, you know, when they uh, when they have needs or we have showings or we're, we're working through contracts. And, uh, you know, I've seen a, a really positive response, you know, that I think we as humans don't really understand because we're so ingrained and try to, you know, hey, let me prove my worth. Let me prove my value. When on the reciprocal, it's, it's you know, people say, hey, that's great. I want you to go, you know, uh, see your son, you know, play baseball. I want you to go camping with your family if that's what you have planned. I'm really super happy for you. So it's kind of, you know, that uh, counterintuitive aspect that I think, um, you know, the world just kind of uh, spins on on men in general. Yeah, totally. Do you think that, do you think that for a young family, do you think that too many men sacrifice time away from their family to always chase the dollar, always make more, always earn more. Cause I know for, for me in my life, I, I feel like, you know, no matter how much I make, it's, it's, it seems like we're, you know, you're always chasing. It's like, there's, there's always a, the next thing. And like you said, it's really tough to be present. It's really mm -hmm. tough to be present in, you know, your kid's life. It's really tough to be present. Uh, I have four boys and you know that, but, it's it's really be it, it's really tough because you know i have you know a, a day job and then you have four boys in sport and then always in the back of your mind uh you, you know i have a entrepreneur spirit so i'm thinking about business ideas or creating and so so there's a part of it that seems like there's just this chase like a rat race going on 
Yeah, yeah, and you know, I a wise pastor, you know, years ago said, well, what you have to be mindful of is where you put in your time, your treasure, and your talent, right? And so, um, I think that the the tension that we as men feel is, you know, um, yeah, you know, there are there are entrepreneurs and there's people, there's uh, you know men that that travel for work and. You know, and I honor them for that because, you know, being away from a family is really hard and being away from your kids. And, you know, I've been there. I've done that. I've, uh, you know, I can't, you know, I, I can't recall how many, you know, times I've been in, you know, past the Mississippi River and back and forth and, you know, in, in different states of Minnesota and uh, you know, Tennessee and Louisiana and, you know, uh, Maryland and all these places that just aren't close and takes a while to get to from from Boise, Idaho. So I think it's really, you know, from, you know, encouraging men that uh, that are in that, um, you know, landscape and in, in that uh, that type of environment for, for, you know, having to do a lot of traveling for work and being in sales, you know, being mindful of, you know, again, setting healthy boundaries when you do get home. Right. And so be able to spend time with your kids and be able to pour into them, be able to encourage them. Um, you know, we found in our family that it's really uh, breaking bread and, and, you know, over meals. And, you know, we have a great time and we have, you know, wonderful meals together. Um, I've taken up uh, cooking and, you know, it's just a, a part of me that be able to involve my family, you know, when I'm, when I'm around. So, um, you know, and to so, you know, kind of, you know, circling around your question is, do you think too many men are kind of, you know, focused and chasing the dollar? Um, you know, I think it's, it's again, that tension of being able to provide, provide a, um, an opportunity for uh, a generational wealth, which is kind of our heart as a business. You know, how do you kind of do that within, you know, investment space? Because that's what we all want. We all want our kids to succeed. We all want them to be able to set up, yeah. um, yeah. you know, inflation is really hard, you know? And so we're looking at it as, you know, you know, we're, we're talking to clients, you know, our age or a little bit younger and say, hey, you need to be start planning for, you know, helping your kid out to buy a home because it's just going to get expensive. And um, so kind of looking a little bit further down the road, a longer runway, um, I think is something that's really important to these uh, to these young dads and um, that are starting out and, uh, you know, and, and having a good partner in the household, right, with your wife and your spouse and uh, those people. So that way you're kind of, you know, looking long term and strategically, you know, down the road. But um you know, being an entrepreneur is is not easy, you know, and so I honor all entrepreneurs, all small business owners, um, because, uh, you know, until you actually do it, you don't know what what is required to do that and and all the effort yeah. that, that you go through. And so um, I think, you know, again, yeah. just uh, be able to kind of circle back and, and realize, all right, can I be present? And that's something that, you know, I am convicted of. I am I am, you know, definitely this is something I still work on is making sure I'm present at my um son's baseball games i am present when you know i'm helping you know my daughters uh you know um you know with homework or you know, other things so i've done on my phone or you know just kind of you know put it out of the way so um you know one thing i've done oh, is I said you know hey past nine o'clock you know i'll answer your uh, you know, i'll answer your uh uh you know text or your email or or your phone call tomorrow um just yeah. because that's time that you know i can uh you know create be able to create healthy boundaries and and again, I haven't learned that until the last few years, in all honesty, you know, and so it's something that I've been really wanted to get because your, your kids feel that, you know, they know, they know. Yeah. Yeah. And have you, so I want to jump into the baseball scene because obviously you and I connect there, but um, have you ever lost clients because of your boundaries that you set? Yeah. Yes. Um, and at first i it was really hard but now i can see there's a return value and i think that's that's the heavenly perspective right that we just you know can't really see until we really really look at the bigger picture so um yeah tournaments away from uh you know on weekends or you know not being able to you know show uh, a client at home and um, you know, they've been, uh, you know, like, well, we didn't, or it was a couple times, well, we didn't want to bother you. So, um, you know, we went with, uh, um, you know, a different agent, um, which is okay. I'm okay with that. Right. I want my clients always to be well served. I want my clients always to know that, uh, we want the best for them. So, um, but I can tell you that the return on the flip side is that there's a, there's a bigger return when you get that 
uh, value of um, seeing your kid, um, you know, either excel or helping them work through, you know, a, a loss, right? That's almost sometimes more important for us as dads when, how do you, um, you know, champion your kids through, you know, opportunities to be able to grow, uh, you know, grow not only their integrity, but also their perseverance and grit. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons that I love baseball so much is because, you know, it teaches our young men about failure and how to deal with failure because failure is tough, man. It's a, it's a space where we, we naturally look at it as a negative uh, experience, but I've read a ton of books. One of my favorite authors is Napoleon Hill. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's one of the thought leaders that came from you know, the great depression and post world war II, And he was talking about, how successful people, he interviewed thousands of, of people, how successful people deal with failure and they use it as a stepping stone and, and uh, you know, it, it allows them to push to their goals. So, you know, baseball is one of those games where failure is, is almost the expectation you're gonna fail, but can you minimize your failure to a level um, that you can tolerate for one and then and, and then allow yourself to be successful through the failure. So I think it's a good a yeah. good game that teaches that teaches our boys. Yeah, you know, in you know, we were just talking about this as a family. Um, actually just just last night at dinner is there's nothing more challenging in all the sports world to hit a round ball with a round bat, you know? Yeah. And when you look at you know, some of the best hitters ever, they fail seven out of 10 times, right? And so mm -hmm. when you kind of put that, uh, you know, put it through that lens, you know, baseball is a game that, you know, is is really um, an opportunity to, to grow, to grow a skill that um, will always be, you know, kind of teaching you through failure, right? And so, um, you know, it's, it's really, you know, what I like about baseball is it's all about, it, it is a game of inches. It's a game of centimeters and millimeters, you know, just angle of bat and, you know, the way that your mechanics uh, go through hitting or, or pitching, you know, and, uh, you know, so it's really neat to see, you know, from, from my experience being involved in, in uh, you know, not only my own time playing baseball and, and growing up through, um, you know, elementary, middle school and high school, but also, you know, through, through my son's, you uh, um, you know, journey through through sports. So um, I enjoy it. I think it's it's great. It teaches um, opportunities to always reflect. How can I improve? What can I do better? You know, it's opportunities to think strategically. Okay, what's the situation? You know, what what do we need to do? You know, and so I just I enjoy you know having with my kid and my son about all right. What does that look like in life? You know. If you're thinking strategically yeah. in in each at each pitch, well, how can you think strategically each day, each moment? Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, in each situation, whether it be with in life or school or, um, you know, that kind of aspect. And I think you know, even more importantly, is you know the statistics within baseball. You know, a lot of it's individual statistics, but it's a team game. You know, you yeah. win and lose as a team. So yeah, um, being able to learn how to collaborate together, work together, understand, be on the same page, communicate um, is, is highly important, you know? And so, you know, I think baseball yeah, or is, how to, is a great- Or how to fulfill about, or how to yeah. feel like his need, you know, like a coach. Yep. You know, it, sometimes it's really tough to, um, to, as a dad, it's really, really tough to watch your kid and in, in, in some coaching experiences they have. And luckily for me, um, my boys have had great coaches, maybe out to maybe excluding one um, that I, I would consider, um, you know, I would, I don't think I would replace any of my kids coaches because they are all teaching them something, either how to act or how not to act or how to respond to adversity or how not to respond. I would say one coach in particular, I wouldn't, I wouldn't invite back in my life if I had the opportunity to do it again. But, but, you know, baseball also teaches, teaches our youngsters, you know, how to respect authority and, and, um, how to, how to come up with a plan and, and how to execute and that sort of stuff. And like you said, it's a, it's a, it's a world, it's a weird breed between, um, in individual sport because they're always on stage 
when they're pitching, they're on stage. When they're batting, they're on stage by themselves. Or a pop-up gets hit to them, they're on stage kind of by themselves. But it's also a team sport. It's a it's a very fascinating game. Um, I didn't grow baseball. I didn't play baseball growing up, but I would say easily uh, it's one of the biggest regrets I have for sure. Yeah, you know, and I think coaches are such an important part of all of our lives. You know, those that that us that, that played sport and you know sports and, and ones that didn't, then I'm sure they have a teacher or a mentor or someone in their life that they can point back to and you know really ingrain those those life lessons. And so um, that's why I've been humbled to be involved in coaching. And uh, you know, I coached my son's flag football team. You know, his other football team. Um, you know, when he got into tackle. And uh, it's just been a great, great part because I remember how influential those coaches were in my own life, right? Mm -hmm. In my own development um, with football, wrestling, and baseball, and um, you know, and you know, I think that's that's why more and more, you know, we as men, you know, need to need to be involved with our with our boys specifically, you know, teaching them, you know, some of these lessons about honor, respect, sportsmanship, you know, um, integrity, overcoming, you know, failures, and. Uh, you know, it's not about winning, you know, and this is what, you know, I, I uh, you know, tell my son is, you know, you know, um, you never lose, you only learn, you know, you don't never yeah. lose, you only learn. And, you know, I think that is something that, um, you know, I'm also trying to, you know, live by those words as well. It's like, okay, what can I learn from this experience? What can I grow up on, yeah. you know, to, to be better in my life? Yeah, and so I want to go back for a second. You you talked about your conviction, and you talked about like heavenly stuff, and those are, you know, as a Christian, those are those are like Christian vocabulary terms, that sort of that sort of thing. But I wanted I wanted to ask you, did you grow up in a Christian household? Did you become Christian later? Like, what what's your story? How do you how do you find Jesus, or how did he find you? Yeah, um, I grew up uh, in a Nazarene church. My parents were part of a, a Nazarene church in Spokane when I was little. I moved to Boise when I was about six or seven years old, so it's the home I know. Um, we attended a Nazarene church here. Then um, in middle school, we kind of uh, um, transitioned to a little bit more of a, of a what would be considered a Pentecostal um, church. And um, then, honestly, in high school, uh, sophomore, junior, senior year, um, I kind of stopped going to church. Uh, we had football on Friday nights, then I would work uh, on weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, and uh, really didn't have um, you know, much of a relationship with the Lord. I, I would say my I considered myself a Christian, but really didn't, you know, practice the faith. You know, um, it was a really good uh, example in that aspect, um, you know, and so then uh, um, through an experience, my uh, my senior year, um, I was I was a wrestler, and uh, you know I was uh, seated pretty high in the state. And uh, the the day before the district tournament, we were we were um, uh, practicing, and I went in for a takedown, and uh, actually uh, my body went limp. Um, so uh, the ambulance came. I was on a stretcher, couldn't feel my uh, arms and legs and uh, was rushed to the hospital. Um, and luckily, uh, praise the Lord, my feeling kind of came back, but I had um, basically strained uh, and tore the, the ligaments in between my vertebrae. And uh, uh, my neck swelled up and, you know, could hardly move. So um, that put, you know, wrestling, hopes, dreams, ambitions just out the window. And so uh, you never know when, when God's calling, when not God knocks on the door with different things. So that was really a, a pivotal transition point in my life just to, you know, kind of explore and go on a journey of like, all right, well, everything that I thought I had or thought I was going, um, you know, with, uh, with sports and, and college and everything, is completely out, out the window um, with this injury. So um, God took me on a journey um, that summer and uh, uh, met my uh, girlfriend in high school, which is now my wife, Becky, um, and uh, uh, super blessed to, to have her in my life because um, she was the one that, um, you know, kind of encouraged me to come to, um, you know, a small college age fellowship um, that summer and uh, at, uh, at a local church. And, 
you know, slowly just kind of came back and just, and uh, that's really when I feel I kind of uh, circled back and really became, um, you know, committed, uh, devoted to, to Jesus and, and gave my life over at that point. And, you know, it's been a journey ever since, but uh, that's kind of my, my faith journey. So, yeah, I uh, attend a, a non audacial church here in, in the Boise area and um, go to a couple prayer meetings with men uh, twice a week and just try to remain involved. And really, you know, I think part of part of my um my great joy is waking up very early in the morning and sitting down with a cup of coffee and, and opening up the scripture and just reading, you know, spend about an hour every morning, early morning, and uh, just read and pray and just have my time with the Lord. Yeah. And do you think, do you think that your life um, would be any different if you didn't get injured? Other, In other words, do you, do you think your injury propelled you to be, you know, like this, this really awesome man, fatherly figure, husband, um, you know, kind of all of the above. Yeah, it would be, my life would be completely different. And um, I think as I reflect, you know, I'm super blessed uh, to be able to have that injury because, um, you know, in all things, you know, God works the good for those that are called according to his purposes. And I do believe I was called to, you know, a different purpose for what um, I had thought, you know, and this is us as men, we like to control, we like to organize, like, hey, we're doing this, um, but God has different plans. And so when you open up your heart and, uh, you know, an opportunity to God for, to be able to, you know, work in you, um, good things happen. I can, you know, my life without, you know, my wife, Becky, or, um, you know, our three beautiful children and, um, where God has me right now, um, you know, great community, you know, wonderful friends, um, you know, like yourself and, and, uh, um, you know, I think I would have been in a, in a completely different spot that, you know, it would just be just kind of, it would be easy. It would be fine, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't give me the joy and satisfaction that where God has me right now. And so, you know, the trials that we go through, you know, really grow us and shake us and, you know, move us to do to do great things and do things differently. You know, you think it, you know, the great men in, in the world that have uh, really, you know, gone through and, and persevered and, and, you know, creative and, and, you know, did things and inspired people is a wonderful thing, you know, and so that's why I enjoy connecting with with men, because I do believe that as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another and we need each other. You know, we need community, we need to be able to, um, you know, bounce ideas, share our struggles, be vulnerable and, and honest and authentic with with other men. And, you know, I think that's uh, really an aspect that I also want to, you know, teach, you know, my son as well. Yeah, I think I think men have a really tough time with um, being vulnerable um i i before before we uh moved to texas i was in a men's group that was we we went through the curriculum i think his name is ed cole's curriculum on like a men's ministry and it was crazy because the beginning um when we all showed up there was probably 25 of us and it dwindled down to about i would say 15 or 16 people but in the beginning, it was very, very quiet. There were people, we would show up to the meetings. Nobody would say much. The instructor would kind of go through the material. We'd answer questions that were prompted to us and that's it. But by the end of the year, it was like almost a year long experience. By the end of the year, I mean, men just crying and just being yeah. able to like yeah. shed so much weight. You know, like for people that may listen to this or people that listen to this, how would how you know how do you become vulnerable or how how would you say uh helped you get to a vulnerable state where you can sh kind of share these feelings yeah i think it takes time right and so i think you know you have to build trust uh with with the men around you and so you know i've been in a, a specific prayer group with uh four other uh christian men for um, several years and so you know you really want to um, you know, we build the, build that trust, you know, and that way there's encouragement there. There's not shame. There's, there's honor, there's encouragement, there's, um, you know, the benefits of, of sharing ideas or, or the, you know, more importantly, the accountability, right. As well. So, um, you know, similar to your situation is it does take, it does take time. So 
Um, it takes time to find the right people, um, the right uh, right ones that, that you mesh wish and, and, and the ones that God, God has for you. So, you know, I've always prayed, you know, the last, you know, many years that, you know, I can have, you know, um, a group of a handful of, of men that can gather, um, you know, or if it's a mentor um, that, that you have, someone that can speak life into you that has, you know, is kind of the um, generation, maybe a generation or two, you know, uh, further ahead of you in life that can offer up advice, you know, that has been through the struggles that have, that has, you know, seen kids go through, you know, the journey of, uh, you know, teenagers into young adults and, you know, kind of those struggles that, uh, that we all have um, as, as husbands and fathers and be able to, you know, not only um, give encouragement, but also pray, pray in faith that, uh, you know, that, that things change or there's opportunities to, to grow. Um, and so, you know, I think, you know, the first step is really, um, having the humility to know that um, it's an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity to man to, to grow, to have someone in your life. Because a lot of us, um, um, you know, might not have, you know, uh, mentors in life or fathers or other people, other men. Um, so I think, you know, church groups, first of all, are very important. Pastors, um, prayer groups, getting involved in, in a local church uh, is, is one aspect because I think many more churches are coming out with this aspect of men's group just to say, hey, men need to get together and talk. We really yeah. don't have an outlet. We can get together and we can wrestle and we can watch football. But, yeah. you know, we really don't have a platform for us just to be able to share and be vulnerable. Um, just to release you know, weight. So, yep, exactly. We, we, we just don't. We haven't had that. And it's been this kind of, um, you know, I think part of, of, of culture in, 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 yeah. in, in our, in our uh, country that where it's like, hey, no, I'm good. Right. I'm fine. I'm keep holding it all yeah. in. I'm, I'm good on the outside because I'm strong. I'm, I'm powerful. Yeah. I'm a man. But um, just to be able to be broken and free is, yeah. is really a really life-changing experience. Yeah. I know one of the, I think one of the toughest things for me to juggle is being able to combine different areas of my life and be like a Christian, like an example to my kids or even a, like an example at work. And, and so professionally, I'm in the healthcare industry and so, and you know that, but maybe somebody listening to this it, it doesn't know it, but professionally I'm in the healthcare industry and it's, it's very, very tough to be, um, you know, a faithful leader and I get to manage people and it's, it's tough because in those types of industries, you, you know, you can't share Jesus when you know that they need it. Like we work with, uh, work with a nurse that, that was going through some struggles at home. I think she was dealing with some domestic violence and um, and just looking for answers. And as a leader in a profession, you know, I can offer services that the the healthcare uh, system provides or has. But deep inside me, I'm like the whole, like the whole is Jesus. Like the the feel to fill your hole, yeah. this missing point in your life, it's Jesus because. I was there. And so, and then, you know, the world is telling us, you know, on the, on the secular uh, point of view that there's this huge battle going on. And, and so you always get in these places where it's weird to share Jesus at work and it's weird to share Jesus in your personal life. And then you have outside conversations and it's, it's, it's almost weird and you kind of get in this feeling, you know, how do you, do you know, do you get to combine your two, uh, do you get to combine work and, and your Christianity or your faith in Jesus? And, you know, how do you, how do you accomplish that as a real estate agent or a broker, as an entrepreneur? Yeah, I think. Thank you for asking that question. I think that is pivotal in all of us, uh, not only as men, but anybody in, in that is a you know a believer in the, in the workspace. Because I believe that more than anything else, we are called to be marketplace ministers. And you know, a lot of times we think, oh, ministry is just for missions work, or a pastor, or an elder, or you know, someone doing a Bible study. No, I mean, we are, we're building a kingdom of, of heaven and kingdom of God right here on earth. And all we can, and the best thing we can do is be Jesus, the hands and feet of Jesus, be those that love, be those that care, be those that have joy, be those that have peace, you know? Um, and so 
part of it is just, you know, that example that we can bring to our workspaces, to our, um, you know, the lives that we live and, and, you know, interacting with our clients. And so, you know, for me, that looks like just things that are just super simple, kindness, honesty, integrity, you know, joy, um, care, you know, comfort, you know, over people if they're going through a hard time. Um, and, you know, I just, we've been, you know, and, and I just pray honestly in this, in, you know, in my heart, you know, in situations like, God, show me an opportunity, you know, let me, you know, open up a, a door, you know, so to speak, where it's like, you know, for them to share or there's compassion. And many times, you know, I've, I've heard people, you know, they say it's kind of tongue in cheek a little bit, but it's like, oh gosh, it'd be, you know, we should, you know, yeah. Could you pray for this? Or could you pray for that? And like, great, let's do it right now. And so, you know, us as men, do we have that? Do we, are we bold enough to be able to take that moment? Um, and again, I, you know, I'm, I'm working on this in my own life, but I've really tried to, you know, see those opportunities and, and take a hold of them. Um, you know, and, and for example, just to, just to, you know, um, that just blesses me is, um, I have this wonderful, uh, contractor that, that I work with, um, you know, I, uh, uh, over the years, it's been four or five years and that I've worked with him and, um, you know, I didn't hear from him a while and I knew his, his wife was, um, you know, kind of struggling with, a, um, you know, a brain tumor kind of been in a hospital over the last year. And, uh, you know, we, we always, we prayed for her, um, at our team meetings, um, every week and, um, you know, then, uh, hadn't heard from him in a while. And then I got a call and, and I said, Hey, how, how are you doing? And, uh, um, he's not a believer. Um, and, uh, you know, he said, well, not great. My wife died this weekend and, um, blew me away. Absolutely blew me away. Like, what do you do with that? Um, yeah. The believer yeah, how do you respond? Um, yeah. You know, my heart just broke and I just said, you know, um, I, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to comfort you, but all I can do is, can I just pray for you? And, uh, yeah. you know, that was a huge, um, you know, step of, of boldness because, you know, they're, they're contractors, right? <laughs> so anybody that's worked with contractors yeah, yeah. is, you know, great, wonderful people, but just really rough around the edges. And, um, yeah. I've really seen, you know, through that prayer is just a softening in his heart. I don't know where that goes, but I just trust the Lord that that's a seed planted and an opportunity that, that we can be. And, um, you know, when, when, when God gives us that, that open door, just to be able to step through and take us, take a step of faith. Yeah. So I think, man, the, like, those so being in healthcare it's like totally desensitized me to so many different things i think um but those are those moments where you don't know what to say or how to respond because it's it's really tough to have crucial conversations yeah. on uh, landon's baseball team there's just an awesome family dude they're so awesome the mom has stage four uh, cancer, meaning it's, you know, throughout other organs in her body and, uh, dude, it's in her spine, it's in her ribs, it's in her breast, it's in her, I mean, it's all over the place. And it's just a matter of when, you know, God like calls her home and, and those conversations we were having, um, were really, really tough because you you know, in the industry, in healthcare industry, you kind of just, you know, you listen, you kind of move on, you get the next patient. But when it's somebody that's close to you like that, man, it's like, first question goes through my mind is like, do you know Jesus? And they, and, and they do. And the other thing is, is, you know, as a man and being connected to her husband, the question is, you know, what do you need from me? How can I help you? and just being available and and letting them know it's okay to to use me as a resource whatever i'm going to do i'll drop i'll drop it for you and your family and just being there to love on them and i think as as a man it's really hard to extend love to another man um like like not like a weird type of love but just like just just a friendship and uh Anyways, man, those stories are crazy. Well, I think, you know, those are really hard situations for all of us. And it's, 
it's becoming more and more commonplace, I think, for all of us. One, as we, we grow older, but two, as we just, our communities grow and we start interacting more. And, you know, so it's, it's as a Christian, like, what do you do with that? Like, how do you encourage someone? What do you say? Um, and I think you hit it right on, you know, hit it, hit it perfectly is like, okay, what do you need? How can I help you? I'm here for you. Cause that's, that's the, you know, that's the, you know, the original church, you know, back in, in acts, you know, that, you know, when they came together and they, they shared and they gave liberally and they were, you know, a community that, that encouraged and, uh, you know, God doesn't promise us life, you know, he promises us life everlasting. And so, um, you know, through that is we can just encourage, just be, be, uh, available. And, um, you know, and I know for me personally, and I know you as well as, you know, we won't stop praying for the miraculous to happen. You know, God does amazing, you know, work and we want everybody to have, you know, a miraculous healing, but sometimes, you know, for, we just, we just don't know, you know, how it plays out. And I've had, you know, many friends, you know, over the years and people that, you know, I've gone to high school with or, or had, um, uh, you know, worked in various jobs is, yeah, they've had very traumatizing and, and terrible medical experiences. And, you know, we've had several family and friends die, you know, from, from these things and it gets really hard, you know, and um, yet God still reigns on his throne, you know? And so I just put my, put my trust and faith in that, that, you know, God sees the bigger picture, you know, and he knows. Yeah. It, it, it reminds me of like unconditional friendships. And, uh, I was just talking, uh, to a buddy of both of ours. I won't say his name here, but I'll, I'll tell you after we stop recording, but we were talking about unconditional friendships, this, just this ability to just to be somebody's friend and it, there's no attachment to it. I think there's, there's a lot of people that, that have, these attachments to the friendships because they get something in return and when we get the opportunity to you know love on another man love on another dad or be there for somebody else it just goes to show you that like these unconditional friendships are still thriving and yeah. Yeah. now more than ever we just need people to lean on and not expect something in return you know um I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but for for me, it's 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 one of the aspects of my life that's huge because I work with a lot of physicians and I had one physician call me and said, hey, I need you, you know, I need your help. Can you can you run over to my house? And they were in surgery. Can you run over to my house and grab grab uh, his son and run him off to practice? And I said, sure, no problem did it and then he wanted to pay me for it and i'm like no we we don't pay to be friends yeah 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 no and that's that's true friendship right is you know giving without you know something that you want in return right you know we don't you know control and manipulate through that and so you know i think you know it just blessed my heart the way you say that because i i start thinking about you know, that unconditional friendship and just being there is, you know, I can't tell you how many times over the last couple of years I've had, you know, you know, men come up to me and just say, hey, how you doing? I said, well, you know, and, and it's an opportunity to be vulnerable. It's like, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm struggling or, you know, I have, you know, this going on in my life or, you know, um, you know, I've got a family member that uh, that has cancer himself. And, and it's like, hey, I'm here for you. And they give me a hug. And it's a real, it's genuine. Yeah. Right. Genuine. It's not this, this side hug. I think a lot back, of times is it's it's really yeah. an embraceable hug as a man that we don't get from yeah. other men because it's a friendship and we think oh man don't you know get away from me we're all you know keep your distance but yeah. you know that yeah. physical touch you know between friendships is important yeah dude it's uh it's also one of those uh, you know it, it's like when when somebody goes hey how, how you doing and you go oh, i'm okay mm -hmm. and when you're really not okay it's as a man, it's really tough. I was working with this guy in Dallas and he was a rep. Um, and I swear reps are all the world's best looking people. And, uh, <laughs> it's like, the, that's like the prerequisite to be a rep in the, in pharmacy or the hospital industry or whatever. And this was a really, really, I mean, not, not to be weird, but a good looking dude, you know, you knew he didn't have any problems with you know, dating and that sort of thing. And one time I went up to him and I said, what's up, bro? How you doing? And he said, 
and he just started crying and he just broke down and i felt really weird and awkward because like this is not the normal response i'm like trying to walk to my office and he's walking to a case and it's supposed to be like this quick transaction and literally yeah. starts crying like he'd been waiting for somebody to ask him a question and come to find out his girlfriend that he proposed to fiance left him for another guy that they both knew i i forget the story but maybe it was her boss and he needed he needed somebody there to to just bounce his his vulnerability off of and i just happened to be that person and at first i was taken aback because i didn't know how to respond and then all of a sudden it just kicked in like god just gave me like this this premonition like just shut up don't talk just mm -hmm. listen and yeah. that's all he needed that was it it was yeah. just me being an ear to him that's good and i think that's such an encouragement for all of us as, as men and you know in the workplaces because we get so hung up on you know getting through the work day doing our jobs doing anything like that which is great we want to honor you know those people that are that are that are, employ us you know but you know the tension is in the challenges are you are you present enough can you be present can you take the time can you set it apart and when those moments happen you know that god puts in front of you um because it's my own challenge because i'm like i just got to get stuff done like i'm a doer i love yeah. checking things off yeah. and just getting things done yeah that gives yeah. me satisfaction and you know that, that's how i honor the lord but yet yeah. you know the tension is all right when those situations come up can i say hey my priorities just completely went out the door, right? And so how yeah. do you reprioritize the person that God puts in front of you to be able to just just be in that, someone to listen, right? Yeah. A lot of people just need to you know, listen or a shoulder to cry on or someone just to, you know, give it some encouragement or say, hey, I'm here for you. Tell me more. Um, and that's been really hard for me because, you know, in that moment, in that split second, it's like, okay, well, how does everything else that I was going to do in the next you know, half hour, hour. Now that got shifted, you know, later in the day, but I have to go say, I'm going to compartmentalize that, give that to the Lord and say, God, I trust you to buy back time somewhere. And so that's been, you know, a lot of my prayers over, yeah. the, over the last yeah. few years, just like, Lord, and I'm, increase my yeah. time elsewhere so I can focus on the person that God has in front of me. And sometimes, yeah. you know, a lot of times that's the coworkers, people, but it's your kids too. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a huge list maker too. And I'm a just, I'm like addicted to making lists and checking it off. But there's a, there's a, there's a part of me that goes, you know what, this is just not that important. It can move to tomorrow. And it kind of gives me some, some, I don't know, it's like a, a weird satisfaction just to go, you know what, I was able to be present right now. And, uh, and uh you know the and here here it is if if tomorrow doesn't come it's a win-win for me it's i get to be present yeah. and yeah. maybe it's my kid's life or my son's life or if tomorrow doesn't come i'm the meeting jesus anyway so um you know we're getting close to to our hour mark but before i let you off i want to ask you one more question if you had um if you're looking at your younger self and and talking about being an entrepreneur and getting into fulfilling you know your dreams um and i and i and i look at it like as an entrepreneur i'm fulfilling my dreams instead of the dreams of somebody else i think working in nine to five you're almost fulfilling the dreams of somebody else um but if you had to you know talk to your younger self to give give that person some advice what would it be you know i i have thought about this over the years um i think it's very important that if you're a young and that's what I encourage, you know, my own kids is, you know, find find someone of good character, good integrity that works hard, that you see them, um, you know, doing what you think you might want to do and go talk to them, take them to lunch, take them a cup of coffee, you know, kind of, you know, pick their brain about what they did. Um, you know, that's something that I didn't do. I always in my head thought, hey, I can do it myself. Here's what I need to do. And I'm just going to move forward. Um, and one of my biggest, you know, it's hard to say regrets. I really don't want to live with regrets. But one thing I feel I missed was connecting with my grandfather. Um, he was uh, a business guy out of Seattle. 
Um, he had, I think, a lot of wisdom that I just never tapped as um, a youth uh, and as a teenager and young adult. Um, and so I think the uh, um, the Bible is very specific that a gray uh, gray hair is a crown of wisdom. And I think you know us as as men as as you know young men as well, you know need to find someone that is um, you know someone that they can connect with. Whether it's you know once or twice a year, it doesn't need to be much, but it's just those conversations where hey, here's what I learned because we all back to our original point is we all have had failures, and so the more that we can share you know, what people would do differently, the better it would be, you know, um, I can tell, you know, you know, people right now that I, I have, uh, you know, young, young adults and millennials that, you know, that I meet with and, you know, I said, start investing now, you know, start building a, a portfolio now. Um, because, you know, you look at, you know, the opportunities that we all have, it's like, oh, shoot, now I'm in my forties. I wish I would have done it. Had I start this 10 or 20 years ago, you know, my life would have been different. You know, I could be, you know, could have things differently. So um, I think that is, that's an aspect, um, you know, from, you know, interpersonal aspect. Um, and then number two, you know, for, you know, I, I tell my younger self is uh, start a 401k, start investing, you know, early on, you know, when you're, you know, 18 years old, start a business, start, start something. You know, I think, you know, as I look more into the, not only just the real estate sector, but across all sectors, um, there's so much opportunity for op entrepreneurs, small business owners to do very well, um, you know, uh, and, you know, within, you know, either a service based economy or if it's, you know, within the construction industry or, you know, I think marketing and, and uh, um, advertising is going to is huge. It's going to be completely be an opportunity uh, for people. So just kind of, you know, having that passion, really kind of sitting down and and, you know, knowing what, what God has for you. And I think that's important. Yeah. too. And, you know, the third aspect is get involved in a local church, you know, get involved in, in something, have a community that you can, you can get into that is, uh, you know, under the authority of heaven, as we call it, you know, and, uh, you know, you can tap those, those resources, which is great because then you can live for a different calling, you know, for a higher calling, still be blessed, still have, you know, opportunity and, and uh, be able to work hard and, and, you know, gain finances. But, you know, we're not working for the finances, the riches, we're working for the riches of kingdom of heaven. And in turn, yep. God, will, God will guide you. Yep. Man, thanks so much for sitting down with me, dude. It's, um, oh, you know, you. we don't really get enough chances to talk, but, um, dude, this was awesome. And so uh, I'll let you off. I'll give you some time back. And, uh, man, dude, I really appreciate you. Take care. Um, my pleasure. All right. Love you, man. Thanks. Yeah.